Hello friends, welcome back to Graceful Living. If you're new here today, welcome. My name is Dina and I am so glad you decided to stop by. Now in today's video, we are going to be staying right here in the living room area. I really want to redecorate this hutch that is behind me, but I'm wanting to do it with the items that are on it and are here in this room. Now I have challenged myself this summer not to buy any new home decor because number one, I really don't need it. Number two, prices are kind of skyrocketing. And number three, I felt like it was a way to encourage us all to use what we have. Now we can make our spaces absolutely beautiful with the things that are in our home just by reusing them in a different area, in a different way, or just actually moving them around so just be encouraged that you don't need to spend money every single month to make your home look beautiful to you another thing that I want to encourage you about is your home is your refuge and that's what you need to think about it's not supposed to be Pinterest worthy it's not supposed to be this style or that style because that's what somebody is doing on YouTube it needs to represent you and function for you and your family now a couple of things that I did want to mention before we get started is my thought process as I decorate my shelves now I kind of use this process as I decorate any vignette, but here on the shelf, I try to think diagonally. So what's going on on this bottom shelf is kind of going to be mimicked on the top shelf and vice versa, and then usually cross the way, uh, but it's not going to be symmetrical. So what you see here is not necessarily what you're gonna see on the top shelf on the other side, but it is going to mimic in color, texture and maybe even being I have clocks here I might have one up there but being I have you know the off-white or gold clock faces maybe something off-white will be up in that higher shelf so that is one of the things another thing is everything is going to be pretty cohesive right now you're gonna see I have a lot of black off-whites taupes tans and greens keeping your home very cohesive makes it so much easier to shop your home now I can pick something from any room in this house and I know that it's going to fit in another and so it makes it really easy for me to go around and just find new things for this space let's go ahead and I'll show you the shelves get everything cleared off and we'll start again
as you can see, I got the shelves completely cleaned. I did use a couple cleaners today and that is because I found an old can of my spray away cleaner and I thought I would go ahead and try and finish that off. But I'm also really glad that I chose to use some furniture polish today. I think it really needed it. I, the fan is on, so I'm sure it's helping it evaporate, but you saw me spray the whole thing. By the time I started going back, it had already kind of dried up onto the wood. So I'm thinking some of that might've been because the wood is so dry and then of course the fan. But right now what i'm going to do is i will kind of show you behind the scenes now when i do a video like this normally what i do is i get up the day before and i figure out what i'm going to do i put it all together and then the next morning i wake up take it all down and then shoot the video for you because i have found it is so much easier for me to do it that way doing it like this you're having to think on the fly go through the process and have everything spread out. Plus, make sure you've got your camera moving around or trying to get the right angles. So it takes me a little bit longer to do it this way, but that's fine. This might lend you some encouragement to just kind of see that it's the same way for us. <laughs> we have a big mess going on behind the scenes as well when we're trying to figure out what we're doing. And sometimes it doesn't always come real quick like I mean it's easy to put something back on the shelf that you decorated the day before but when you're trying to think of what to do it's a little bit harder and takes a little bit longer so I'll go ahead and show you kind of what the mess looks like it's not horrible it's just things off the shelf in areas that they're not supposed to be but you've kind of got to shuffle through all of this and figure out what you want to do next so that's what we're gonna do right now okay so I've got everything out I did try to keep kind of all the decor here now I've got some on my dining room table because I didn't have enough and then the books on the chairs with the covers out so I knew what colors were where and kept them grouped together so as you can see like all the greens then just kind of the taupes and tans I do have some decor right over here, <laughs> sorry, right over here that I can use. I do have some over here on the ottoman as well. Excuse the tripod. Oh, I got that down. I don't know that I wanna use this again. This, all of this has been this way since spring, so I'm not sure. I may use it, I may not. And then I've got a little bit of decor over here as well and again I'm gonna try and not use the birdcage but we'll see let's go ahead and try and figure out what we're going to use first I think I like it. So I'm gonna leave it like that and go on the other side and try to mimic the style of this. As far as the colors, maybe try and find something glass that I can put down there. I don't know that I have anything that small. So we'll look around and go from there. Okay, I have a few things collected. I have some books to bring in the black that's on the top shelf across the way and a clock because we had a clock on the other shelf plus i did want to use my box that i found quite a few months back at an antique shop i just have some buttons in there because i have not yet redone the felt in there so it's just hiding some blemishes but i think this box is so beautiful i love the rose detail on the top and the delicate lace here on the bottom the legs are just so pretty to me so I do want to keep that on the bottom shelf so that when somebody does come over, you see all of the detail. 
And what I'm thinking is I want it on this side of the shelf because the room opens up this way. So this will be the first thing they see as opposed to a clock. Now I'm going to bring in the books for stacking purposes and height. That's going to elevate my clock, but that's obviously not enough. I need something else and I think what I'm going to do is maybe bring in some books here but not necessarily in black. I know I have some these right here have black on them but they also have the gold detail and then kind of a goldish tone here as well. So I think I'm going to stack these here. Those three actually work really well. So I might have to move things over. But just like the top shelf over there, I think something more is needed. So I'm gonna bring in some of the greenery that I had on that side as well and try and drape it maybe behind the clock. I think this is just kind of like a spray of greenery that you can get at Hobby Lobby. I don't remember the price, but I do love it. I love the texture. I love the different tones of green. I don't necessarily like to show my cut ends. So what I'm going to do is kind of just drape it around like that, put it behind the clock against the book and hopefully may have to readjust. Let's see, I'm going to have to take one of these pieces off here because I have one missing here and that's going to show up more than in the back. Actually, I have another one. Take it off the back and just, again, put it up here so that when you do fold it to hide that end, it'll kind of prop up against the book. And then you can also use the clock to keep it in place. Then this end, just kind of twist and turn it to where it's going to look its best and try and drape it a little bit more what I'm trying to do anyways over the book. Now I might take a piece off the back. That's probably why some of those ends are off to begin with and kind of play with it here to see where I want to place it. I kind of like that because then I've got it going around both sides or I could take it down and put it here but I think I'm gonna leave it there. I think I like that look. There's not a lot there but I like it. Okay, now I'm gonna move on to the top shelf because I do wanna use this lamp. I think what it will do, I don't have a light bulb in it. I don't know if you remember. This one was from Hobby Lobby. It was originally $29.99, but I bought it and it didn't work. So I took it back to exchange it for one that was working and found out that they were just going to throw this one away. So I brought it home and took the wiring out and just use it on my counter with a puck light. But right now what I'm thinking is I do have the light up here in the hutch and I'm hoping, yep, see, it's going to light up my lampshade. So I think I like that idea. Okay, I found these. These are in the same color tone. And again, we're kind of carrying every color through. You'll see the golds, the blacks, the green. So I am going to bring some greenery in. I don't know if I'm just gonna, we'll put it there for now, we don't know. I do have a candle to bring in that candle light. I don't know if we'll use it here or not, but let's see. I think I need a couple more things. I do have this small vest that I've had around the house for some time now, so I might incorporate him. And I love my little Eiffel Tower, so let's see what we can do here. Absolutely amazing. I just 
love this book. 1914. So, put that back there and then I'll go get my cloche and clean that off and let's see about putting that there. leave it like that for a minute and see if it is something that I want to keep there right now I'm thinking yes because it's bringing in another added texture and a lighter color which I like but it's also mimicking a bunch of the colors that are already in the vignette so we'll leave it as is and move on to the bottom shelf now on the other side Okay, here I'm just going to begin bringing in these green books that I really, really enjoy using. They have beautiful vintage pages and then of course the color green. Now, this one has some blue paint on it, so this will most likely be turned around and that's another reason why sometimes I turn the books around. Thankfully, it does have some pretty vintage pages in my opinion. So it's going to work out perfectly. I'll just turn it around there. And I think I'm going to just stack them into the bookcase. Now, usually I don't like the idea of just one book turned around. So I will probably look at the, well, this one right here has another speck of paint. So it'll probably be this one. What I was gonna say is usually I look at the titles and choose which title I would prefer to turn around. But in this case, oh, and these are upside down. In these, in this case, that had a little bit of, I think it's just kind of bleached out, so. I'll turn that one around. And I have three on this side, so it's an odd number. Yes, I have the two here, but then I definitely have another odd number on the other side and I really like to do that as well. I don't yet know what else I'm gonna put in here though, so that's the hard part. Okay, I think I'm gonna try and move this back here. And I really love the idea of reflection in a room. So placing this mirror here is going to not only reflect the room, but I want to put a candle in front of it as well because of the green and the different colored tones of green that are in my top shelf on the other side, I'm hoping that it will kind of help mimic that as well. Now I'm gonna readjust a little bit because it's not exactly how I want it. So let me kind of work with that and we'll see what we come up with in the end. take a look okay again not a lot going on here but I do love the idea of the reflection of the mirror as you can see you can see the clocks right now but when you're just sitting back on the couch you'll be able to see the reflection of the candle when that's on and then of course just whatever else bounces around the room okay on this shelf I think I'm going to use my green books that I've had up here I think they were on this shelf if I remember right, but I want to try and put them maybe in a different fashion to give it a little bit different look. I'll stack those there and then maybe have some going in between This is one of my thrift finds when we were in Palm Springs. I think it's so pretty. I love it. So Victorian looking very vintage and I thought about setting it here 
Okay, on to the last shelf. Now my pickings are getting very, very slim. So I'm gonna start with some books that I know I wanna use. Now, how I'm going to use them, we're not sure yet. Somehow, these two need to make it into the mix. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna get a couple more books. I think these are my most favorite as far as the pages. They're so, so pretty to me. They're just really thick and very, very distressed. So I think I will open these back up. I'm pretty sure I had them open before. And maybe that is where I will put the larger picture. So far, this is what we have. Now, I will say this right here is kind of bothering me. I don't know if I want to put something else right there or move that around a little bit. Usually, my first shelf is not my favorite, but I think I'm liking everything else, especially when you stand back and you see it all together. I think we're just missing something on that top shelf. So let me try and figure out what I can put there. Okay, I found this little piece. I'm going to see what it looks like, but I don't have my phone on the tripod. So let me put you down a second and we'll see what this looks like. Okay, I put that little piece back there, but I did change these two pieces up just to make it a little bit more pleasing to the eye. I felt like the triangle going up in the back looked better than having it the opposite way.
All right, friends, I am going to begin to close this video up. But before I go, I want to thank you all for coming along with me today. And I did want to leave you a little bit of encouragement for the week. Now, I know I have mentioned a few times now that I've set a challenge before myself about not purchasing new home decor this summer. But as I thought more and more about that, I have thought about the word grateful. And I really want to have a grateful heart, a grateful spirit, a spirit of gratitude. We have so much and I just want to remember those things, the big things and the small things. And so I had really been thinking about that and thinking about what I could do to make sure that I thought about that each and every day and kind of made a point of that word gratefulness or gratitude. And then I went to a ladies night and our pastor's wife brought in some books that we could each take home and it is all about gratitude. You open the book up and it's super simple. It actually gives you like three lines to express what you're grateful for that day. It has a little date line and that's about it. And I love that. I love when things are really that easy and simple to use because it just makes it easier for you to implement in your daily life. And so I thought I would ask you if you want to come along with me. I know you may not have the book, but it could be easily done in a notebook or even a piece of paper. You can leave it on your kitchen counter or at your desk and just each and every day jot down three things that you are grateful for. Now, it's super easy to come up with things that you're grateful for when life is easy. But when the going gets tough, it gets harder to come up with those things. So I feel like if we get in the habit of doing that, then in those hard times, it becomes a little bit easier to remember the good things. And then we also have a huge list of evidence of what we are grateful for. So like I said, I just wanted to encourage you to be grateful, see the little things in life that you are thankful for and jot them down. All right, I will go ahead and close this one up for now. I want to wish you all a wonderful rest of your week. Remember to stay safe, be blessed, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye, everyone.